Hi, welcome to Barkhart Bookshelf, a video series about books and the drinks they inspire. My name is Elias, and today we're talking about Tripping Arcadia by Kit Maquist. First, I'd like to give a thanks to Dutton Books, the publisher, for providing me with an advanced reader copy so that we can have today's video arrive one week before the book's debut at the end of the month. Um, we can all get everything we need for a great cocktail together to celebrate the book's arrival on shelves, and uh, I can really help to celebrate a book that was not only one of my most anticipated reads of 2022, but is going to be one of my absolute favorite reads of the year as well. Tripping Arcadia is Mayquist's gothic debut, a contemporary gothic set in New England, uh, divided primarily between Boston and uh, out in the Berkshires in the mountains of western Massachusetts. It's a wonderfully botanical book, um, which is something that I am always drawn to and something that we'll get to see in our drink momentarily, with scenes set in greenhouses and in gardens. And of course, uh, the main plot of the book is about uh, this more combination of moral outrage and uh, personal outrage at the sins of this wealthy family uh, that gets manifested in uh, poison, in uh, the preparing of, of poisons that uh, then get used at these extravagant uh, wealthy parties out in the Berkshires. So it's a wonderfully timely novel with uh, a fantastic voice. The main character, Lena, uh, is looking back on uh, her history with this family and with this place and really communicates well both the, the distance that she's trying to put between herself and the various less than uh, perfect acts she commits, and uh, at the same time an undeniable magnetism and intimacy as she gets drawn deeper and deeper into the fraught familial relationships of the wealthy Verdu family. So it does all of these wonderful things that we love to see in a gothic, but in a fantastically timely and contemporary way, a, a story that's going to satisfy uh, readers who uh, just want to see rich people get poisoned uh, and people who want to uh, spend some time in beautiful houses with dark secrets um, and with mysterious wealthy persons who uh, may or may not be fun to hang out with. And with that in mind, why don't we get to this week's drink, uh, the Arrow's Edge, named for uh, the Verdoux family estate where much of the action in the novel takes place. Now we're going to start, let's not start with our base spirit because we've got to prep our glass first. Um, we have here the St. George Absinthe. It's an Absinthe Verte, one that we've used before and that I'm very fond of. Uh, it's got this wonderful, almost sort of menthol quality to it, slightly minty in with those other uh, anise forward um, absinthe botanicals. And instead of doing our usual rinse on the glass, I've got a little atomizer here. So you can see our coupe is slightly, it tilts slightly in uh, to have a slightly smaller mouth uh, than the widest point of the bowl, which can make it difficult if you're trying to rotate through. But with the atomizer, you can give a good three sprays, and we've got the entirety of the glass coated with our absinthe without worrying about any uh, excess. If you don't have an atomizer, do our standard rinse method that we've demonstrated before. I've got links for that here in the corner. And um, discard the excess. We'll have a little fun something that you can do with that. Uh, later on in the video. But now that our glass is prepared, let's get to our body of the cocktail. I'm going to start with some apple brandy. Uh, apple brandy is just, it's a wonderfully quintessentially New England spirit. We're going to get one ounce of that, our channel favorite, Copper and Kings, uh, based in Louisville, Kentucky. 
um, but still very New England apple trees, sort of golden. And there's a wonderful golden quality to the light that sort of suffuses this novel, um, and something that I found myself really fixated on as I read. So uh, we've got the sort of golden-hued apple brandy. Next, we'll get one ounce of almond liqueur. Uh, again, another rich golden color. It's bringing a sort of sweetness, a sort of nuttiness. Um, and of course, when you're not using nice, friendly uh, sweet almonds, uh, there are bitter almonds that can be used to make the poison cyanide. Uh, so a little bit of the, the safer option for us here today. Um, and we've got one ounce of that there. And as you can imagine, because we frequently find our way to three ounces, we've got uh, one ounce of our final ingredient here. And this is a basil liqueur, one that I've made myself um, pretty easy. I'm using just the last of my batch from last summer, but uh, what you're going to want to do is take some basil leaves and cover them with vodka and let them steep. Uh, you probably do two uh, batches of leaves in there and strain them off before it becomes too sort of brown and muddy looking, um, but you would do that over the course of a week, so about three days and about three days uh, for your basil, and then add just a touch of sugar to uh, soften things and, and bring it to a lovely balance. So we've got one ounce of the basil liqueur in there as well. And as you can see, we've got a wonderfully rich, golden-hued cocktail in there, and we'll get our ice going right here. Wonderful. And of course, we always add our ice last because that's what's cooking our cocktail. We'll give that a nice stir, get a good bit of dilution there, about 15-20 seconds, or until your ice sort of hits equilibrium with the liquid in the glass. So, a bit like a science project, but we don't have to do it in our closet the way that Lena is doing in the novel. Uh, and it's going to be a lot friendlier than uh, the poisons that she's making. Wonderful. That looks good. Oh, I can smell that almond, a bit of the fruit, uh, the basil as well for a nice herbal botanical kick, and then we'll strain that with our julep strainer into our coop that we've prepared. But of course, as you can see, we've got quite a bit of space still here in our glass. Uh, and so we've got our old friend sparkling wine. Uh, now, in the book, they drink a lot of champagne, but because Lena, the main character, has spent so much time in Italy, I thought a Prosecco would be more appropriate. This one has some wonderfully apple finishing notes, and we'll get that just out there, uh, and is going to pair really well with the apple brandy. Certainly choose <laughs> a, a Prosecco or a sparkling wine that you enjoy. I would recommend something on the drier end because we've got both that almond liqueur and the uh, basil liqueur in our cocktail. And then we'll just top our cocktail, give it a bit of effervescence, a lovely fizz, and lighten that to a much brighter sort of gold. And so, there you have it, an arrow's edge in honor of Tripping Arcadia by Kit Mayquist. The book will be available on the 22nd of February this year. I've got a link to pre-order from uh, an independent bookstore, Brookline Booksmith, that's offering a free pin and art print uh, alongside every copy of the book that gets pre-ordered in the next week. Uh, got links, as always, to the Boston Shaker for tools and ingredients and to Twitter and Instagram for written versions of today's recipe. Until next time, please try the drink. Let me know what you think. I always love to hear your comments. And until next time, cheers.